a DIY dryer box. A nice way to keep your filament performing great and save a few bucks in the process. It's today's video and it's coming up next. All right, what's up everyone? Back at it again. It is DW Darkwing Dad. Uh, so today's video, uh, I'm going to be explaining a DIY dryer box. So on the heels of my last video with Fix Dry, I had a couple questions and one in particular was from Thomas Walker and he had said, hey, I have a Ender 5 Plus and I am printing with 5kg roll filament. Holy cow, that's big. Were there any, you know, dryer box solutions? And I know Sun Lu had just released a four roll dehydrator. However, based on the dimensions that Thomas gave me of his uh, filament spool, uh, it still wouldn't fit. I basically have two methods here. Uh, one is a conventional DIY, and the other one is more of like a, an old school DIY DIY, just taking a couple different components to make your own dryer box. So I'm gonna go over both of them today. Now, initially I had told Thomas to reach out to me and I was gonna talk to him through email, uh, but I figure if you know he, was using 5kg spools and running into this problem. Uh, maybe other people were too. So that's what this video is for, is to kind of give you a little insight and giving you a solution to where if you have massive rolls of filament and you wanna dry them out, this might be the answer for you. All right, so basically with a 5kg roll of filament, this thing is massive. I don't even have that, um, but you're going to need something a lot bigger than something like this. So you're not really gonna be able to go and buy it per se. Now, uh, you can use one of these and it can do a load of the work for you. And let me show you how. So I'm just using this Tupperware container here uh, as a reference. So basically what you can do, if you have either numerous rolls of filament or you just have massive ones that won't fit in a traditional dehydrator, what you can do is get a Tupperware container. You would get one of these dehydrators and you would actually place it inside. So for all reasons aside, let's say this Tupperware container is a lot bigger than it is. You would basically put the dehydrator in there. You would remove or open the top. And then what you would have to do is basically build some sort of cradle for the filament. So you could take something like a piece of PVC, uh, maybe a piece of wood, anything like that. So the filament can roll very similar to how it rolls when it's in the filament dehydrator. Now, the very important thing that you have to do, and I'm gonna kind of cheat and show you uh, my dryer box that I made way back in the day, uh, is what you will have to do is you will have to get one of those humidity gauges. But what you're gonna wanna do is either in the top or in the front, you're gonna wanna drill a hole so you can actually see what the humidity is. We wanna make sure that that humidity is dropping. Then whichever way the filament is going, uh, let's say you know you have it like this and you want the filament to come through the top or through the front, you're gonna have to drill a hole and then you're gonna have to put some sort of opening to where you can run the filament through or maybe the PTFE tubing. So something like this is really cool because essentially the filament dehydrator is doing all of the work for you. And yes, this method does work. You can see here that before I even plugged the filament dehydrator in, uh, we were sitting around 43 or 44% humidity. Uh, I left it in the box for about 15 minutes and we were already down in the 20. So it definitely does work. Now, it being in a bigger Tupperware container, it may take a little bit longer. But like I said, you're gonna have that top on, it's gonna click in, it's gonna seal everything in place. Uh, you can even go ahead and get some uh, silica packets here and actually throw those in while it is uh, dehydrating. And that's just gonna help pull moisture out even more. So uh, that would be the conventional DIY method of making your own dehydrator box. Essentially, you're using all of the components, everything in here, and you're just enclosing it and building it in something more. But uh, it's relatively inexpensive. You can get a small tote for, you know, seven or eight bucks, uh, something like some PVC. You can probably get that for a few bucks there. And then the humidity gauge is like three or four bucks as well. So uh, I wouldn't recommend if you get the fix dry trying to take this one apart. Um, it's, it's locked in there pretty good. It gives you access to change the battery, but uh, they're so cheap, you could pretty much put them anywhere, but you definitely wanna make sure you do have some sort of humidity gauge uh, on here, because if you're using the dehydrator, it's only gonna detect it within this certain cavity, so it may give you false readings. So it's okay to use this as a fallback, but you would definitely wanna put a humidity gauge uh, like I have here at the top, or maybe on the front, so you can see what the humidity is make sure it's getting lower and it's pulling that moisture up. 
One thing I will say with this too is you may want to choose your filament dehydrator wisely. Uh, obviously with this, uh, with this cord, uh, it has, it's connected to the unit and it's got the big end. So if you drill a hole, you might have to come up with some kind of grommet. Uh, you can close it with the top on. Uh, that's how I had it was facing down and the top will still close. It doesn't click in completely, so it could let some moisture out. You can kind of see here that it's not really clicking in place. If you use something like a J.O. or a Sunlu, uh, they have the plugs here that they just unplug. All you'd have to do is just drill a small hole. You could just thread this right through the hole, plug into your dehydrator, pop the top open or take the top off and you're good to go. So that is a look at the conventional DIY. That's, I guess that's something that's a little bit faster. You're kind of relying on the filament dehydrator to do all the work. So the other method I have is the DIY DIY. So uh, about three years ago when I got into 3D printing and I was just trying to save some bucks here and there, I basically made uh, my own dry box. And this dry box eventually evolved into <laughs> my own filament dehydrator, which it worked okay. So basically what I did is I just went to Walmart and I bought a Tupperware container. Uh, I went ahead and 3D printed a filament roller that I found on Thingiverse. And on the top here, I went ahead and I drilled a hole and got this uh, little grommet here that I could run the PTFE tubing. Uh, obviously you can see the uh, hydrometer gauge. You can see how long I haven't used it because the battery is totally dead. And I would throw uh, some of my silica packets in there and that would help moisture from getting in. Pop that on, close it, work pretty well. So that'll keep additional moisture from getting in, but that is not going to pull any moisture out. So the idea that I used to do, I went and got uh, one of these small uh, reptile heating mats. And what I did, I just had it stuck onto the side right here uh, with some double-sided tape. So it went on the inside and then the cord just kind of came out and it would sit just like this and I would close the top and it would you know, generate heat and it would help pull moisture out. It worked pretty good. Uh, this is like a true DIYer. You know, you're talking five bucks for the Tupperware container, a uh, couple bucks for the hydrometer, a uh, couple bucks for the grommet, and then the heating pad here was I think like $7.99. I noticed the humidity level before I had added uh, that heating pack. Uh, it would fluctuate uh, somewhere in the high 40s. Once I put this in here, it did actually drop it down to the 30% uh, range. The only downside to this is there's no way to control the temperature. There's just one constant temperature. So, you know, something like the conventional um, dehydrators, they're gonna have, you know, levels where you can set the temperature high, depending on what material you're using, you're gonna get substantially better results. For the most part, I'm always using PLA or silk PLA, which require the lowest temperature. So for me, this worked really good. Uh, if you're using ABS PET-G, um, you know, I don't know if this is the best option. Uh, it's still pretty cool though. Um, the reality is, is these filament dehydrators are, are going up more and more in price. I remember when I first started buying them, you know, you can get them for around 40 bucks. Uh, now I see them for 60, 70, 75 dollars. That's uh, that's pretty crazy. You know, if you don't want to print the rollers, you know, you can even go and, and buy rollers and, you know, they would, you know, sit in the bottom and you could use it the whole time you're printing. It's not bad. If you're trying to, uh, you know, pinch some pennies or save some pennies and still uh, keep your filament dry, uh, you know, this is a nice little option for, you know, around 25 bucks or less. If you're on a budget, it's a cool little option that's still gonna be good results. Uh, you may have to run it longer. Um, you know, there are variables. You can't control your temperature. You're definitely gonna have to, uh, you know, keep your filament in there with the heating pad on there for, you know, a lot longer. Most of the times, if you're trying to dehydrate traditional filament, uh, anywhere from three to four hours is good. Uh, something like this, it's probably gonna be close to twice the time. So I still thought it was a pretty cool idea from out of the relics there, something that I used to use back in the day. Wanted to do this DIY with a 5kg roll. You're obviously gonna need a much, much bigger uh, you know, Tupperware container, but uh, it is applicable to both. So I figured I would share that with you guys. Despite what anybody thinks, uh, despite what you may have heard, moisture still does affect filament uh, in different ways. Obviously some types of filament more than others. Don't think that moisture doesn't play a role when it comes to your prints. It can definitely affect it in negative ways. So making sure that moisture is pulled out, filament's nice and clean and dry, it's gonna give you great results.
I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions on anything, go ahead and drop me a comment. I'll be sure to leave links in the description for all the stuff that I use here, both the conventional method and the DIY DIY method. Uh, everything from the reptile heat mat. Uh, if I can find the link for that roller uh, that I printed off Thingiverse, uh, similar Tupperware containers, the hydrometer, uh, all that stuff. But again, like I said, if you guys have any questions, can't find the products, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll hit you back. There'll be lots more videos like this and more. So if you do like 3D printing and all things associated with 3D printing, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I have a long list of videos that never seem to end and I've got a lot more coming just around the corner. Last but not least, if you are wanting to do more of that conventional method and pick up a filament dehydrator, make sure to check out FixDry. They have some of the best prices that I've seen and you can use my promo code DARKWING12 and get 12% off all of their dehydrators. Something like this guy here, the NT1, you can get for somewhere around $37, $38 with my promo code. Works really great. I've been using it on all my prints and keep my filament nice and dry, keep my prints looking better than ever. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you like it. Make sure to give me a thumbs up, drop me a comment if you have any questions and make sure to click the subscribe button. And until next time, it's DW out. Later. Thank <laughs> you.